we give you glory. And honor, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are our King. That let your name be glorified, Lord. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory, Lord, and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified, Lord. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. He is the Lord. And him and him alone is the Lord. Let his name alone be praised. Let his name alone be magnified. Let his name alone be honored. Let his name alone be praised. Let his name alone be worshipped. Let his name alone be adored. For unto him alone be all the purpose and praises in Jesus. He is the Lord. No matter what you're passing through, praise the name of the Lord. When you are happy, praise him. When you are not happy, bless him. When you have overcome trials, bless him. When you are in the middle of your trial, bless him. Some people say, but man of God, daddy, I'm always passing through experience of life. Yes, God is continually producing and making you. Producing and making. Let me tell you, many of us, if not because of the trials we are passing through, we would have relaxed. But because God don't want you to go to hell, he continues allowing your fire to burn. Keep burning the fire. Keep allowing the fire to burn. Allow the fire of the Holy Ghost to keep burning in your life. Allow the fire of the Holy Spirit to keep on burning. Keep on burning. Keep on burning. You're burning fire, but you don't want the fire to burn you. What I mean is that there's fire in you that needs to be lightened up. If you don't burn the fire now, if you don't allow the fire burn now, the person will burn forever in hell. There's a fire in your bone. There's fire in your life. Steer up the fire. Steer up the fire. Steer up the fire. Steer up the fire. And let the fire burn. So that you will arise. To a different level and a different standard. It is the will of God most high for you to hear the truth you are hearing now. So many people may think we are preaching outdated messages. Ah, we are preaching old time message. We are talking about the ancient of the days. We are talking about the man of Calvary. We are talking about he that has been alive, is dead, and is alive forevermore. He that cannot die and will never die again. And that is Lord Jesus, the King of kings, the God of God, and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We are talking about the mighty man of Allah. We're talking about he that died and is forevermore alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. And Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. And Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Our Lord is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. 
Jesus is alive. He's alive forevermore. Our king is alive forevermore. Messiah is alive forevermore. He's not dead. No matter the situation, he's not dead. Worship him, praise him. For unto him alone be your the glory. Unto him alone be your the honor. Unto the king and our God and our Lord and our Father be your the magnificence. To God be every glory in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. It is well with the righteous. We give God all the praise, dominion, and thanksgiving adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. It is well. Father, bless your world. As the word is coming for right now, bless the hearers of this world. Father, there are people who are born in their data, born in their credit to listen to this world. Father, especially the people from Africa, oh God. Father, Lord, there are a lot of people from Europe, from Asia, from North America, South America, from Australia. Oh, my King and God, as they are born in their data, listening to this message. Father, bless them. Favor them. And let them see the goodness and favor of the Lord. Let them see the miraculous hand of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the God of divine visitation visit them. Let the God of divine hope give them hope. And let the name of Christ be glorified. Have your way. Speak and minister your word to us. And unto you be all that glory as we worship you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. King of kings, God of God, and the Lord of Lord, have his way in your life. Bless you, visit you. Open your eyes to deep understanding. Pull you out of, uh, out of that pit and break every chance in your life. And lead you and lift you up to this great king. And let Christ be honored forever in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We're talking about destiny killers. We're talking about destiny killers. DKs. Destiny killers. Yes, like I told you, I thought it would have just been a message of one, two occasions. But today we're in part 11 of it. Possibly it may lead us to part, more parts before we're going to end it and then get into another topic. Uh, some people are suggesting topic for me. No. You see, to that, the Holy Spirit will keep on giving us a topic. It might be your personal topic, but this is a worldwide topic. You say, son, after this, this, before I'm finishing this one, he has equally given us another topic we're going to dwell upon. So follow us as the Spirit is leading us. He will not lead you astray. The Holy Spirit will never lead us astray. He will lead us to the path of greatness, path of righteousness. He will lead us to the path of God. Holy Ghost knows the, 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 the need of the church right now. He knows the need of the church of now. And that is why he's leading us and directing us. So that we're going to talk about the need of the church of now. God will keep you and bless in Jesus' name. Okay. As we're going on now, we talked last time. I told you there are three cases of destiny killers. I told you there are three cases of destiny killers. We showcase them into three. Point one is physical destiny killers. Point two is spiritual destiny killers. Point three is environmental destiny killers. And last week, uh, yes, we dealt with uh, physical destiny killers. And then I told you, but we, finish, we didn't finish, we're going to finish it today. The physical destiny killers, I told you, number one, it includes uh, the association you keep, your friends. Who are your friends? A lot of people that would have been great, but their friends has made them to be nobody. There are people who are nobodies, but their friends have lifted them up again. The kind of association you keep, the people that never edify you, never make you happy, never make you glad. Who are your friends? The people that so demoralize you, the people that when your phone rang with a Christian ringing tone or a Christian music, you become ashamed. Now they will laugh at you, look at you, look at you, old school like you. What kind of friend are you keeping? Number two is impatience. Impatient. We saw Diana, the kind of friend she kept that caused bloodshed. And then impatient. We saw the prodigal son. He was in a hasty. He did it, but later he was the one that blamed himself and he came back again. Uncontrolled habit like that of Samson. Incontent like that of Balaam. Okay? Today we're going to start talking about female or male. If you're a male, if you're a male, that female could be a destiny killer to you. If you're a female, a man could be a destiny killer for you. So that's what we're going to talk about. Okay? The opposite sex could be a destiny killer. Opposite sex could be a destiny killer to you. I know of that woman that was full of unction, full of anointing. Around my area here, she was trying doing the work. 
And she's, you know, she separated herself from everything and said she's not going to get married. And people were going to her. She was doing the work, doing the work. But after some time, the thought of a man came into her brain, come into her ideas. And people were asking her, ah, why are you doing this thing? You say you're not going to get married. You say this. And I said, I want to marry. I want to marry to Dan tomorrow. I must get married. It is in my brain. I must get married. It's not sin to get married. But do God wants you to get married? There are a lot of women who are married today that if they had stayed single, they would have done a lot of things. They would have achieved a lot of things. They would have gone far for the Lord. You know that it is easier for a woman to stay single than a man. And things like that. But before you understand it, the woman said, no, she wants to get married. Advice came in. She threw away the advice and said, no, she's a human being. They said, well, you're a human being. Why not go down? They say, I will marry. But for years from your childhood, you were telling yourself you're not going to get settled. You tell, when they never knew you had such a call upon your life. Well, how come now? She said, I must, I must. And eventually she forced herself into marriage. After a few months, she now died. That was how the ministry collapsed. That was how everything closed up. And that was how he ended up. She ended up. There are a lot of women that have been on fire for the Lord. They are powerfully used of the Lord. When they pray, come and see fire. When they pray, come and see fire. There's one woman that came to my office. She was telling me how powerful she has been when she was operating her ministry. And eventually she got married. By the time she got married, oh my goodness. By the time she got married, she said things started closing up, closing up. Instead of opening up, things started closing up, closing up. And before you understand it, she's in this type of sickness, in another type of sickness, in another type of sickness, from this sickness to another sickness, to another sickness, to another sickness. She will always report to her husband, talk of what her husband has done, talk of this and talk of that and talk of that. A man could be a destiny killer to a woman. A woman could be a destiny killer to a man. So, especially anointed one of the Lord. Okay? So, look at what the Bible said in the book of First, uh, First King chapter 11. First King chapter 11 about men being destiny killers and women being destiny killers. Okay? The love for women, the love for men. There are so many women that have not controlled their appetite about men. Well, oh, come on. That man is turning my brain. You are married already. He said that man turns me off. He turns my brain. I love everything about him. And this and that, you're off the line. That's a destiny killer. That's a destiny killer. That was how they deceived one woman like that. The man saw that the woman so much loved her. Him, I mean, the man then came a bit closer. The woman was pushing the husband's money, pushing the husband's money towards the man. And at the end of the day, they ended up, you know, this thing got lost. Sometimes with fair little love. The woman was so blinded that they planned and even killed the husband. Ah, it only opened her eyes when the man said, but I can't marry you. He said, what? The woman didn't know when she said, you helped me and we killed my husband. And you say, you're not going to marry me. He said, there's a younger lady in my life. No, I don't think I'm going to do that. Ah, the woman didn't know when she busted. And me and you planned and killed my husband. The woman have to go and report the issue. The end two of them were nabbed. Is she to that? They were all arrested. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, a man could be a destiny killer to a woman. A woman could be a destiny killer to a man. But majority of the time we see it as only women, 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 women. No, a lot of men have been a snare. A lot of men have been a destiny killer to a lot of men. Okay. A, a, a lot of men have been a destiny killer to a lot of women, I mean to say. That's this young lady. Oh, she is the one going to bank, paying in the money of the company. She'll go and pay in the money of the company. And some boys discover that they came as destiny killers. They came in form of love. Gave the woman a fake address. Gave her a fake address of where they belong to, where their house is. And kept loving the woman, buying one thing or the other for the woman. Oh, promise her marriage, hire the car, came around with the car. And before understanding, the head of the woman turned. Ah, the head of the lady turned. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. And before understanding, they fixed their ways. And they know that the lady will keep on sending the money of the company. The lady will be the one sending the money to the bank. And before you understand it, they now spoke to the lady. They, 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 they forcefully bring in an urgency. They forcefully bring in an issue. They forcefully bring in a matter. 
and told the lady, look at what has happened. The, 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 this man is in need of this. The police are coming to arrest him. He did a genuine business. They thought that this and that, they seized the business and uh, a lot of money is needed, you know, to pull out the goose. The goose won tens of millions. Yeah, they, how can we do it? A lady that's already in love. Her mind has been lured into love. We're talking about destiny killers. She never knew that these are people who have planned to be destiny killers in her life. And 1.5 million, she was asked to go and keep to the bank. She gave it. They continued talking to her. She brought another money, brought another money, until the total money was mounting to 5 to 6 million naira. And before, they, they were telling the lady, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Just pay it. The moment we sell it by next week, they will give you false hope. By the moment we finish all this thing by next week, highest in two weeks' time, your master will not discover. And the company was so relaxed because they have trusted her for years. She had been doing that for them. You know, they, 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 they felt that, no, 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 she is most of trustworthy. They were not even asking her for the teller. Where is the, this thing? They were not even receiving a lot. And they were keeping quiet. They may say it is an issue of the banker, network problem, this and this and that. They were relaxed until when it was getting to two weeks. They said, no, a lot. This and this. The lady, what happened? Yes, 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 yes. We're paying in the money. No problem. You called the people and said, the company is demanding the money. They said, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to bring in the money next tomorrow, from next tomorrow to another next tomorrow, from there, from there. They did enter the brain of the lady and the lady had brain fuck. The lady was thinking about it. She started having mental problems. She started misbehaving. I didn't know if they drug her to death. And before I understand it, the lady become a gone. She died. And those people that did that thing laughed. And they went their way. Let me tell you. Whosoever that shed blood, shedding of blood will not leave his lineage, will not leave his life. You that keep on duping people, calling the names, doing one thing or the other, even in the house of God. Even in the house of the Lord, so many people have called men of God, introduced themselves, introduced their pastor, introduced many things, and said, look, give me some money. I am interested. I am among the people that will make your platform. People will know your platform. I will increase like. I will increase number of followers. I will increase number of viewers. I will increase number of this. I will increase number of that. I will do this. I will do that. And so many men of God felt, oh, I want to grow. Oh, at least let 500 people watch me. Let 1,000 people watch me when I am preaching this and this and that. And they will call their money in dollars. And before I understand it, they will be paid. And when they are paid, that will be their end. When they are paid, yours truly, no address again. Destiny killers. And they fear they have duped you. They never knew it is their future. They cut short. They never knew they have stamped, stabbed their future. Use a knife and stab their future. May the mighty hand of the Lord help us. And let the God of grace be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord God will help you and help me. I don't know who is the destiny killer on your way, but I make a decree right now. They are coming in, creeping in like that you might not know. Any man, any woman that's a destiny killer in your life, may God open your eyes to know him, to know her. Anybody that will be used as an instrument to discredit you, to hurt you as a destiny killer. May the mighty hand of the Lord fight, open your eyes and fight your battles in Jesus' name. They may monitor you from every angle, from everywhere. You might not know what is happening, but when you make God your running in placement, you make God your defense, when you make God your everything, the Lord will blind the plans of the devil and blind their eyes, and they will not do you any harm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible told me that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He sees when trouble rises, you overseas. He knows. He knows how to handle you. The Bible says he knows how to handle the righteous. He knows how to defend the righteous. My decree is that from today, the battle is no more your battle. That battle is no more your battle in the name of Jesus. The battle is the Lord's. The Lord will fight your battles in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive it as you say amen to that. Amen. The battle is no more yours. The battle is the Lord's. The Lord is the fighter of every battle of your life. In the book of First King chapter 11. First King chapter 11, we start reading from verse number 1. About destiny killers. Look at how Solomon, a great king. Look at how Solomon, a mighty man. But before we read First King 
chapter. Before we read First King chapter eleven, please let's go to First King chapter three. Let's go to first of all First King chapter three from verse number three. First King chapter three from verse number three. First King chapter three from verse number three. Let's see his zeal. Let's see the way he started. Let's see the way he moved. Let's see the mightiness of the Lord. First King chapter three verse three. First King chapter three verse three. Okay, First King chapter three verse three. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the status of David and his father only uh, 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 father. Only he sacrificed and born incense in high places. Have you seen him now? But at the beginning, he was loving God so much. He was loving God so much and 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 so much. Okay, look at what happened. There. And the king went to Gibor to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place, a thousand burnt offering, the Solomon offered unto that altar. In Gibor, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, that's verse, three, by verse 5, and God asked Solomon, and God asked, what will, what, I asked, what I shall give thee. Solomon was worshipping God. He was making a lot of sacrifices to God. He was born, going born, born in incense. Look at him. The Bible said he born a thousand sacrifice. Oh my God. And king went to give out to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings. He was born in good sheep and this thing to God of heaven and earth. That was the method of worship of those days. Okay. He was born in all this, all this thing to God. He did what he did so touched God. And the Lord said, what shall I do unto you? And Solomon was asking for another thing. The Lord said, he never asked for money. He never asked me to kill your enemies. I know what I'm going to do. The Lord lifted him up. The Lord lifted him up. The Lord blessed him. But look at what happened. Look at 1 Kings chapter 11. Look at 1 Kings chapter 11. Let's read from verse number 1. 1 Kings chapter 11 from verse number 1. 1 Kings chapter 11 from verse number 1. 1 Kings chapter 11 from verse number 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women. That was the person that loved God and was making sacrifice to God. You see how the destiny killers came and turned his mind and turned his thought and turned his ideas. All those sacrifices he was doing to God of heaven and earth. All those sacrifices he was doing to God, everlasting father. He was no more doing those sacrifices to God. His mind thought, changed, his idea changed, everything changed. Instead of serving God, he changed to women. He was no more sacrificing to God. You had a zeal for God at the beginning. You made a vow to God what you're going to do. You made a promise to God what you're going to do to God and a lot of host of other things. You promised God, Daddy, as you elevate me, this is what I'm going to do. As you lift me up, I will do this, I will do that. And since the Lord have lifted you up, what have you done? Look at what the Bible said. Because, uh, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Mabad, Amorite, Edomite, Zidonite, and Hittite, of the nation concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will return away your heart after their God. Solomon claimed, Unto this in love. What God said he didn't do. What God said he didn't eat. Where God said he didn't go. The unbeliever, the Lord said, don't marry them. I have nothing to do with them. These are the women that was at the mind of, uh, at the mind of Solomon. A wise, the wisest man so far live. Then so torn and become like a prey, torn and become like a bread, torn and become nobody. Because of what? Because of what? Brethren, because of what? Look at how low he has fallen. Look at how down he has gone. He went too low. He went too down. He was making sacrifice to, uh, uh, to God of heaven. God was in love with him. He was worshipping the king of king, God of God. And God was in love with him. And before understanding, his mind was changed. His idea was changed. One time you started with God. You started in purity and holiness and righteousness. You made a vow to God. I will serve you all the days of my life. I will not go back to my vomiting. All those evil dresses I was wearing. Exposing my naked nail. Exposing parts of my body. All the artificial and attachment I am putting on. All the lies I have been telling. All, this, all the forgery I made in my life. I have repented. I am not going to do them anymore. Many of us went too far to do restitution. But today what has happened to us again? What has happened to us, we are no more there. We dropped a little bit, we get back to our vomit. Solomon that loved God, destiny killers came in form of women with their dangling breasts, 
they were before him, before him. Oh, this one will show the picture. This one will show the nakedness. This one will show everything. You know, David, the, the Solomon said, oh, what a powerful woman. This is what. Look at that. Where far, so far he has gone. Oh, my God. Look at so far he has gone. Look at verse 2. Okay, verse 1. Look at still in verse 1, the Bible said, but King Solomon, first King chapter 11, we are reading from verse number 1. Okay, Bible said, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughters of Pharaoh. He loved so many together, look at, daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Mobile, Amorite, okay, Amorite, Edomite, Zidonite, Hittites. The people God said, forget about them. Don't go in with them. He so much loved them. Look at verse 3. And they had 700 wild princes. Why? Princess. And 300 concubines and his wife turned away his heart. What is done in your heart from the Lord? Who is that woman? Who is that man that so much loved you? Who is that man that so much loved you that is turning away your mind from the Lord? If you are not married yet, who is that man that is turning away your mind from the Lord? Pushing you to the world, pushing you to the things of the world. And he's telling you, I'll do this, I'll do that. Who will he marry you? And whom do you want to marry? You know he will take you far from the Lord. You know he's, going, he's, not, he's not going to worship God of heaven and earth with you. And you are still interested to marry such a man. Why do you want to end up like that? Do you know it's better for you to go to heaven without marriage than for you to marry and jam a rock? Look at Solomon here. Look at how far he has gone. He never knew a destiny killer was waiting for him. My prayers is that any destiny killer that is waiting for you before you get there, may the Lord of heaven and earth open your eyes in Jesus' name. May heaven and earth open your eyes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the God of heaven and earth open your eyes. Let Jehovah Shalom open your eyes. Let great Emmanuel open your eyes for you to know that that destiny killer, they are very, very wicked. They can come in form of love. They can come smoothly, but there are people that have resisted destiny killers. There's one woman I know around this area. She's a woman of God. She stands for God. She stands for the work of God. She has been standing her ground all the while. I know her when I was very, very young in those days. She was a powerful woman of God. She said, no, she had, been, she had gone too far for God. She has gone too far for the work of God that she's not going to get married for any reason. No, 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 that she doesn't want to get married so that no man will hinder her and stop her from the fellowship she's having with Jesus and from the work of God she's having. Our people were laughing at her today. So many people that laughed at her, discouraged her. Today they're seeing her standing. She has grown up. She has had the ministry. God, everything a man could achieve, God has even given her. Many things a man could not achieve, God has used her to achieve them. Even in the physical, which is blessed. Spiritually, she's blessed. I mean, God is using her mindly and greatly to do the work of God in honor to the glory of God's holy name. What are we trying to say? Don't allow anything to set you back. Don't allow anything to stop you. Don't allow anything to hinder you from the work of God, from the work of Christ, the, 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 the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Don't allow anything to stop you. Don't allow anything to quench it. Don't allow anything to quench that fire. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Let the fire of Christ burn. The fire of light. The fire of glory. The excellence of God. Let it burn. Every destiny killer can come like a friend. They can come smoothly. They can come like a friend, but they have a mission. Yes, they can set you up, do one thing or the other thing about it. One lady was crying. Oh, I, don't, I wonder who you call your friend these days. One lady was crying and crying. He set up his friend. He was, he, he, he was with a friend. Huh? Uh, okay, yeah, she. She was with a friend. A lady for that matter. And the friend took the bath and came out. She took the naked picture of the lady. And before I understand it, took another naked picture, took it again. And then... Uh, came up to the lady and went to the boyfriend and said, your, your girl is sleeping around. Look at her. I caught her nakedness and told the lady, I'm going to expose your nakedness. I'm going to expose your nakedness in the internet. I will expose your nakedness in the internet if you don't pay me so, 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 so amount of money. And the lady cried and cried and cried and begged the friend. The friend cut her off and said, I must have to pay. 
I must, you must have to pay. If not, tomorrow you are seeing it. The lady cried and said, no problem, no problem. No problem, I'm going to pay. The lady paid exactly that man the lady needed. And after a day or two, he said, I received the money, but you need to add something on top of it. If you don't add this one right now, I'm going to post it so that you're going to see this and this. Uh, the lady cried and begged and cried and begged. But no, you're not talking to her. She wants to do what she wants to do. Before the lady arraigned with the police, the police came and got her arrested. You see the kind of world we are. You see who you are calling your friends. A lot of people would have been gone high. A lot of people would have gone, gone too far. But destiny killers are there. I know of a brother around that organized with somebody. They got their visa to travel abroad. Two of them in those days when going abroad have not been rampant. They got their visa, contributed their money, dealing on a goose. He never knew the man he was dealing with was a very crafty man, was a dangerous man and a wicked man. And before you understand it, while they were in a hotel eating, uh, he poisoned the food of the friend. The friend just went out, let me get more drink, let me get, he poisoned the food. The friend ate the food and came, they went to the hotel room, he started vomiting and there he died. And the man left him there in the hotel room and ran away, made away with all the money, all the documents, and whatsoever they have together. He made away with all these things. And behold, the man died. His people came and carried the corpse and buried him. The other man may be living now. If anything to happen to him tomorrow, he said, God, where are you? And people will begin to say, oh God, where are you? Before the kidnappers killed him. Where are you? Before the uh, soldier killed him. Where are you? Before the non government killed him. Where are you? When things happen, you can go to God and God may give you the mystery of what has happened. Are you hearing me, child of God? I'm talking about destiny killers. Who is that man? Who is that woman? That man could be a destiny killer. That woman could be a destiny killer. As far as you're married, keep it with your husband. Get his advice, move together. Cleave to your wife. Have understanding together. Advice can come from outside. Don't be lord into evil. You, hear me? you young lady that's not yet married, God will give you your own husband and settle you in peace to the glory of God. Destiny killers will be so bright in your eye before they come. They may come in a very subtle way, but God will show you mercy. One lady like that, a young man came to get the lady married with a car, this and this and that. Oh, that's the desire of any other young lady. He is up to hide. He's uh, this and that. He's living abroad. He has a car. He has built a house. Uh, this and this and that. After prayers, he came and pretended as if he's born again. The lady said, no, I'm not going to marry you. Hey, the brother said, the brother sent them mystery. People were calling the lady from far, from near. What are you doing? Do you know what you're doing to yourself? Do you think of this and this and that? This and this and that. The lady said, no. I don't have that zeal in me. I have a God. I know what I needed. The first time, but it could not work. At the end of the day, the marriage didn't hold. After some time, the man saw another lady who called, piam, piam, piam. And before I understand it, the lady ran away from the house, speaking noises, and said there's a strange visitation. He opened the cupboard and began to, she opened the cupboard and began to see this and this and that, and this and that, not knowing that the man is an occultic man. He's just looking at the lady, and the first promise is that when he got the first lady married, that one is going to die, and his money will explode the more, and then he will marry the real wife. The instruction is to make sure that one is not pregnant too. But this one became pregnant and died before the time. But the baby and the man, the, the, but the baby and the woman, they all died. Yeah, destiny killers. They will not see you. Keep yourself holy and pure. Keep yourself clean. Keep yourself clean <coughs> before the Lord. So that by the time they come, you will say like Jesus, the God of this world has come and found nothing in me. You say like St. Paul, henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Child of God, go ahead and be who God wants you to be. Shine for the Lord in power, might, and majesty in the name of Jesus Christ. That's number six today. Number seven we're going to have today is fame. Fame is another destiny killer. Fame is another destiny killer. There are a lot of people that have fame, and the fame have entered into their brain. 
Fame have entered into their thought. Fame have entered into their ideas. They are not thinking of anything of how to be known, how to be great, how to be this, how to be that. Remember, somebody prepared you, another fame will come. There are a lot of people that have seen fame, seen red carpet reception, but it doesn't move them. They know that every other thing we have here, they are like thought. If God has opened your eye to see heaven, if God has opened your eye to see the glory above, if God has opened your eye to see where we're going to enter in, you see that even the highest reception here on earth is like a toy. It's man-made reception. Oh, have you been to a city where beautiful flowers are singing and praising the name of the Lord? Oh, my goodness. Have you still been to a city where you are red in glory, in power, might, and majesty? You lift up yourself in the air and begin to fly like an eagle. Have you been to that city before? All you are seeing here, I'm a man. Every building you see here shall collapse. Every other thing shall collapse and fell down. But when you get to the city I'm talking about, the city of glory, the city of Jesus of Nazareth, the new Jerusalem that will descend from heaven, a beautiful place God himself has prepared. Jesus said, Behold, I go and prepare a place for you. In John chapter 14, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. A place is being prepared for you right now. That's a glorious place. That's a wonderful place. Can you allow the toys you are seeing here and this mundane things you are seeing here to stop you, to hinder you? No, don't allow that. Never ever allow those things to work on you. Allow the glory of God, allow the power of God, allow the mercy of the Lord. Allow the goodness of the Lord and tell yourself, I want to see more of his glory. I want to see more of his power. I want to see more of his honor. May the mighty hand of the Lord help us in Jesus' name. We have seen number one is either male or female. There could be destiny Killers to you. Another one we're seeing now is fame. Fame. First King chapter 13. If we start reading from number one. First King chapter 13. If we start reading from verse number one. Fame, 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 fame. God have used you mightily. Oh, you have made money. You sang one song and before understanding you are everywhere. I was preaching in one city in Nigeria one day. One young lady came. Oh, I saw God in this girl. I saw zeal in her. But I begin to see her fire dwindling. I said, young lady, your fire is dwindling. Your fire is quenching. Who is quenching your fire? Why is the fire going so down? She started sobbing. She started crying. She told me one of the powerful known musicians. This musician is a mover, a Christian musician. Wherever he sang, people will move. Oh, tears will flow in the eyes of people. He said the musician came to their city and he so much loved the musician. And the musician invited her and discovered that she's a virgin. When she went to the hotel room of the musician, he said the musician broke her virginity. Broke her virginity, she promised Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And still came that evening and sang wonderfully. And even sang, brought the lady to the stage and sang with her. And people were still moved. Chai. Iniquity. Abomination standing in a holy place. May the Lord help us. May the mighty hand of the Lord help us. First King chapter 13 from verse number 1. First King chapter 13 from verse number 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar. Altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, the child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and unto thee shall he offer the priest of the high places, the born is sent unto thee. A man born shall be born unto thee. That was a prophecy. He was prophesying. And he gave a sign of the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent. And the ashes that are upon him shall be poured out. He was given this prophecy and he came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. Come on, catch this boy. Who is this boy that's making this prophecy? Catch this boy immediately. And what happened? Put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not put it in it again to him. He said, arrest him, arrest him, catch this man, who is this man, to prophesy the altar. The great, great grandfather, grandfather, we are our sacrificing in this altar. Who is he? He pointed at him, and the Bible said, the hand got withered. The hand got withered. The hand got withered, so that he could not pull it in again to him. 
Verse 5, the altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Verse 6, and the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God brought, besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and uh, became as it were before. It became as if it were before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. He said no. He said no. You see his fame. He just came in, a man of God. When he was prophesying, it was happening. He was prophesying, it was happening. He was prophesying, it was happening. You may be prophesying that it is happening. Let me tell you. Once the devil see that you are on fire for the Lord, he will want to quench you by all means. He will put plans and ideas to quench you. That's why but when Jesus will do one miracle or the other, he will listen to them. He will design them how they will plan to kill him, kill him, kill him uh, kidnap him. How they will plan to say one thing or the other. Through questions, he becomes sensitive about that. Why are you so insensitive, child of God? And that's why you're meeting a lot of problems, sir. Anytime God uses you mentally greatly, then watch out. Another trial is coming. The devil wants to bring you back to his cage. Remember, you are coming out of the camp of darknesses. You swim off. The Lord showed you mercy. You broke up the shackles of the devil and the evil one. You broke up the shackles and you came out. And today you are saved. You are delivered. You are on top. You are no more a sinner. The devil wants you to come back to that gap. The devil is still saying that where you came from, the gap is still there. The gap is still there. He still wants you to come back and fulfill it. Have you seen why people backslide easily? The man of God was so high, he commanded the hand of the king, got withered and become paralyzed. And the king bowed down before such a young man. The king bowed down such a young man, pleaded with the young man, okay. The young man said, okay, you have seen my God, how powerful he is, okay, come on, receive your hand restored again. Let healing come back to your hand. And the Bible said, the hand of the king jumped off again and become good again. The king, everybody was amazed. People were looking at him, what a miracle. What a sign, what has happened Oh, what a mighty God What a great God, what a true God What a wonder-working God What a wonderful Father What an excellent Savior What a Prince of Peace What a glorious Savior They were all happy and glad They were celebrating the young man Celebrating the young man The king said, come home with me You're going to eat in my palace today He, had, he was still in zeal for the Lord He said, no, I am not going to do that And the Bible said he left God told him to take a different direction. Don't go on the same way. He obeyed. But look at what happened on the way. Look at what happened. Let's read verse 13. Let's read verse 13. Okay. Verse 13 and verse 14. But let's don't mind. Let's just concentrate on verse 14. Let's concentrate on verse 14. Look at verse 14. I went after the man of God. Okay. The old prophet now saddled his ass. Verse 13. And he said unto his son, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass. And he rode thereon. Verse 14. That I read verse 13. Now verse 14. And went after the man of God and found him sitting on an ark. And he said unto him, Are thou the man of God that cometh from Judah? And he said, I am. Are you that man of God that God used mightily, powerfully? I am. Hey, I am. Pride came in. Pride came in. Are you that man of God? Why are you resting? I can see the young man going along the way. He started resting. Hey, I did wonders today. Oh, I did signs and wonders. I did powerfully today. He was resting. He was praising himself. He was saying one thing or the other. Hey, let me find myself. If nobody praise me, don't praise yourself until you get home. The apostles came back and told the Lord Jesus Christ, we cast away devil. We cast away demon. We did a lot of this and this and that. The Lord said, don't rejoice because demons obey you. Don't rejoice because you cast away demons. But rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. That's where your rejoicing should be. Not because you cast away the devil. I see the devil falling down from heaven like lightning. But rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. The man was finding himself. He was resting. The old prophet had it. Ah, tomorrow now, this man will take over me. The fame I have. So this man have come and rubbish it. Even my children is praising this man. Where is he? Which road did he take? He told them the way he's going to take. 
He told them the way he's going to take her. You know, with all this pride of somebody God has used mightily, of somebody that has been mightily used of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, ah, God has mightily used him. And look at what happened. And the Bible said, look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. When the king asked him, come home and let's give him a reward. Look at verse 8. And the man of God, and the man of God said unto the king, If thou will give me half thy kingdom, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. For so was he charged me by the Lord. Why must he open his mouth to say it? He has seen miracle. It has happened. He now say, so was he charged. Why are you leaking your secret to your enemies? Why are you saying what you are not supposed to say? A people, God cannot continue with a lot of people because their mouth is so porous. Anything that happened to them, they will talk it immediately. Anything that happened, yeah, some people will come to social media. I had a dream today. I dream where I am doing this, where this and that. You just want to be known. You are exposing yourself to a lot of dangers. A lot of people are doing their bad day. They will be in this car. They will be in another car. They will be in another house. They will be in another, they will wear these people say, wow, this one has started making money. A lot of people that were killed, a lot of people that were threats, a lot of people armed robber threats they were about is as a result of social media where they manifested themselves wrongly and stupidly in the social media. They were trailed and before I understand it, they were dealt with pride. You know, look at him saying, a secret between him and God. Look at where he's saying, look at verse 9, for so was he charged me by the word of the Lord saying, eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the way that thou comest. Have you seen it? The Bible says, verse 10, So he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Pride. Pride make him to vomit every of his secret. And the, if not, the old prophet wouldn't have gotten him. The children, there are only two ways to that place. There are only two ways to go to that place. He came through one way, and then he have told them, the same God that did this miracle, signs and wonders, the same God that used me, said, I am not going to go through the other way again. The way I came from, I am not going through that way again. So, you know now, if I'm not going through a weather road, I'm going to the true on nature road. And then, that is why the old man of God, the old prophet was able to calculate and said, he told them, he said, the Lord said, the way he came through, he will not go through the way. He followed him through the other way. Have you used your mouth to expose yourself in the name of pride, in the name of being used by the Lord, in the name of living abroad, in the name of being a lawyer, in the name of being educated, in the name of being a, 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 a MD, in the name of this, in the name of that, unnecessary pride begin to come in. Can you be very proud today so that destiny killers will not come? If he was not a proud type, if he was the type that would keep himself and keep the word of God, Joseph opened his mouth and told them what the dream he saw, the first one and second one, and he suffered and suffered and suffered. He trial come, he became an overcomer. If not, his destiny would have been truncated. Joseph used his mouth, wanted to destroy his destiny. But look at that of Mary. The Bible said God showed him revelation, gave him dream, and God angel visited Mary. The Bible said, she concealed it in her heart. She kept it secret to herself. Did you see her under persecution? Even when uh, uh, Joseph wanted to drive her away, the angel of the Lord came. The Lord himself came and preserved. The Lord came and protected her. The Lord came and fought her battle. Oh my God. That was exactly what has happened. And what are we trying to say? May the mighty hand of the Lord keep and protect and preserve us. All the unnecessary pride in our lives. All the necessary pride in our life. May the mighty hand of the Lord deal with us and help us. You know, one woman came and was taking care of the mother in the hospital. Was taking care of the mother in the hospital. And the nurse in the country where he was taking care of the mother. The nurse was doing that. The shift not before she would come out. Do that, do that, do that, that. Sometimes when they said the drip, the other woman that was taking care of the mother will really said the drip. So that it will be normal, it will not be so far. Sometimes when they'll be sleeping, when the drip is over, she will remove the drip. They came and said, you illiterate, you illiterate. Who told you to remove this? Why didn't you call us? Why do it and this and that? The lady kept quiet. The lady kept quiet and they were doing what they were doing there. The lady kept quiet until one day when they were about going, the kind of car that came to carry the lady, the group of people that came, they never knew he was a medical doctor abroad. And ordinary nurses, we are insulting him. 
and doing her, I mean, doing all manner of things, she just kept quiet. You know, it is not every issue you will respond to. There are issues when they come, you keep quiet. There are some morning I will wake up, the kind of text I will see in the WhatsApp, in this thing, you don't need to reply back. You keep quiet. It's a way to greatness. Silence is a great weapon of handling issues. When you handle issues by silence, you will go far. And finally, finance. Today, we're talking about fiscal destiny killers. We're ending it today with finances. So that by next week, we're going to go to spiritual, to, 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 to the spiritual destiny killers. So that God will help us. So that all these destiny killers will be off our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying and asking God. Expose every of the destiny killers in my life. Could it be my brother? Could it be my uncle? Could it be my whatever? Expose them. Let me see them and give me an idea of how to handle them. Be careful of all the dreams you're having. Most dreams you have is from your thought, from your mind, from your ideas. Sir. When God wants to reveal it to you, it will be divine. It will be so touching. He will do it with evidence because he is God. The world enter the heart of people and say, your wife is evil, your wife is a wish, your wife is this, and I end up without telling them what to do. And some of them have sacked their wife and said, God told me, God did not tell you. God is not a thought of confusion. He has made two of you to be one. If your wife is a witch, then you are a witch because two of you have been together, been living together. You don't know that. God would give you a way out. The purpose of Jesus manifesting here is not for anybody to die. His purpose is that we must all be sealed, uh, saved. That is why when you are not saved, when you will come back the second time, you will not go to show mercy at all, at all, in any form, in any way. Okay? The one, another one is finance. Finance has made a lot of people. Finance has posed a very big danger as a destiny killer. Finances are pulls a very mighty and a very thunderous and a very disastrous and a very dangerous weapon to a lot of people. People who would have been there and things like that. People who would have been great. People who would have been mighty. People who would have been wonderful. People who would have been great in their life. But before I understand it, finances is what pushed them out the way of God. And the way of God became nothing to them. But my prayers is today is that the God Almighty will bring God back to himself in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the name of Jesus shall be praised and glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God will show us mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For great is the faithfulness of our God. And we must have to bless him and worship the ancient of the dead. For great is our God forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Finances. You never know who is who until you have financial issue with the person. You never know who is who. You never know who can tell you the truth. Ah, I thought you were a Christian. Ah, I, I, I was thinking you are a child of God. I was thinking you are born again. I was thinking you are this. I was thinking you are that. You say you never know me. I am this, I am that. Finances. A lot of people have seen finances and changed their mind. A lot of people have been giving even money to go and give to people and they change their mind over the money. Since you ate that money, since you made the wrong use of that money, have you received more? You will see a close friend if you are traveling, yes. One was traveling and people put money in envelope, dollars, 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 a lot of them, and give to him. And eventually he went home, made use of the whole money and began to claim that armed robbers came to his house. Thieves came to his house and made away with everything. Because he has claimed to thieves will overrun his life. You don't know that. Allow them. How much is that money? Is it the future and now? Which one is greater? Future is far bigger and future is greater. So many people have sold their future and eaten their future. Look at what happened in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. For Demas have forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Damatia. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. This present world we are loving now because of the money in it. Because of the money, you never know the relationship between you and somebody again. Because of money, you never know who connected you to where you are today. Because of money, because you are now richer in money, because you are riding a bigger car, because you are living in a bigger house, because you have a better job, because you are having better connection, you never know who is who again. I tell you, it will not remain forever. All this money will go away. All those 
connections will go away, the big houses will go away, the big car will go away, all those furnishings and whatever, they will go away. But the word of the Lord will remain forever and ever. Child of God, love of money is the root of all evil. Love of money is the root of all evil. When you're loving money more than your God, when you're loving money more than anything, love of money is the root of all evil. Love of money is the root of all evil. What, do you get into loving money the way you're loving money? No. God will show you mercy and show us mercy. Still in First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which many, some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through, through with many sorrows. So many who long this. They have pierced themselves through many sorrows. They have pierced themselves. Love of money is the root of all evil. Money and the love of money finances have thorn. When you approach money with a good mind, and no money, Bible says money answer that thought, but people don't understand it. People thought that money is this. Does money answer? If money, if what they're thinking about money, they, they, they thought that the Bible was talking that money can do everything. Bible says money answer that thought. If money can answer all things, then we will not be dying. Nobody will get sick now. Eh? Nobody will get hurt now. All these multi-millionaires, you see their children, their brain are dumb. The brain are covered. They don't need one plus one. If what money could have done, the brain would have broken. You see a lot of people seeking for baby. But you see the one that don't have money to take care of baby, they'll be having baby two, three, and uh, in a year. They'll be coming before five months, before five years, they have three children. But you see the one that have money to take care of. Nothing is happening. It is not what the Bible means. The money can do everything. No, it's the money answer it all things. What does it mean? When you call money a slave, money will be a slave to you. When you call money a master, money will be a master to you. When you call money your wife, money will be a wife to you. Anyhow, you call money and money will answer you like that and become that to you. Whatever thing you say money is to you, that's what money is going to be. The love of it is the root of all evil. So I begin to advise you, child of God, don't let the devil use money as a destiny killer. Don't let the devil use money as a destiny killer. There's a man that is a miser. He so much love money. This man is having millions and millions, a lot of houses, a lot of projects, a lot of so many things, but he will never take care of himself. He will be so hungry. Hunger will dry him off. He will keep the money. One day, a nail took his hand, leg. Very deep nail took his leg. He can't spend his money in the hospital. No, he couldn't go to the hospital. Do you know what the man did? He took... Hmm. Do you know what the man did? He took knife, put it in fire. Old method of healing. He took it. The knife was so hot. He poured oil on it. And the, so it was so hot. He now poured it on the wound. Ah! 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 He has money to go to hospital. He has money to take care of himself. In the process of that, the wound then developed, exploded, and before I understand it, he died. When he died, the whole million he made, somebody took over them. The love of money is the root of all evil. Finances. Demon saw money and he left. Before you traveled abroad, you were a very good Christian. You were a child of God. You were fearing God. You were living in holiness. You were living in righteousness. Since you have is 100 billion times better than where you are. There's no death in heaven. There's no darkness in heaven. There's no sorrow in heaven. There is everything in heaven is full of joy, is full of peace, is full of goodness of the Lord. It's the brightness of glory. It's singing every day. The plant there, the tree there, is bearing 12. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hey, what a great God we serve. What a great God we serve. God will help us and see us thoroughly through again. Don't just make money. Let money lead you to hell. Don't let money to be a destiny killer to you. There was somebody, somebody wanted to put to a trial. The person has been in need of money, have been crying. The person said, I'm going to give you a job. He said, I'll be royal. I'll be loyal to you. I'll be everything to you. I'll do, keep it to an end. This and that. And the man said, 
Okay, that is no problem. That is no problem. Even you that's watching now, that's a vow you made to God some time ago. You said, God, I'm going to do this as you do this. God has done it. You have gotten the money. But for you to bring out the money and give to God and fulfill your vow, you are not doing it today. Is it not the love of money? Is it not how can you remove this money? If you don't remove it, it's not going to increase. If you don't remove it, it's not going to increase again. Are you hearing me? There's a give out of that money. And the young man promised he has suffered in life. He seriously in need of money. You see why God have made a lot of people to be where they are. The position they're supposed to have, they can't have it again. Because God knew that anything above that, they messed themselves up. And what happened? That He was sent to that company. And eventually, they said, let's see. They have money in millions of dollars to give to him to do transaction for them. But they say, let's start with just $10,000. Let's start with $10,000. Let's see how he can deliver. Do you know the moment he discovered that the money that was given to him was $10,000, he packaged himself, packaged his family, and made away with the money and traveled with the money. And the company laughed and said, have you seen it? We have millions of dollars who would have been trusted in his hand. But we gave him an early trial of $10,000 and look at how, what he has done with it and look at the way he has run away with it. Forget about him. Let him go his way. Will he eat $10,000 forever? Why are you dating yourself? Why are you causing wounds and pains? Why are you setting all this trap against yourself? Destiny killers is everywhere. God Almighty don't want you to destroy you. Allow destiny killers to destroy you. Have you made such mistake in the past? You can pay back. If you have eaten people's money and claim that this and this has happened, that is what makes you a true child of God. Do you know if you call those people right now with the advice of your pastor or spiritual guide and say, this money, this money entered into my hand, I wasted it, look at what happened, look at what happened, and this and that and that. Somebody did such a restitution. And the man was dearly in need of money at the time he called the man. I said, there's money that entered into my hand. That your money, so, 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 time. I want to pay it back again. The man said, wow, could this be true? And he paid back the money. The man said, for this thing this man did, I will be a born again. I will be a child of God. I thought it's the thing of the past. Ah, so my money is still in your hands. After 15 years, you see, remembered it, and you paid me back. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. You're a true child of God. He never knew that the person that paid the money is trying to deliver himself. He tried to set himself free from chain and bondages. Wisdom, the Bible said, is the principal button. Wisdom, the Bible said, is the principal button. One woman like that, they are doing contribution, and the money is in her hand. The people doing the contribution don't even know how much they have with her. They never knew how much they have with her. And she told me the much money she removed. I told her, no, no, it shouldn't be. And by the time we were talking and talking and discussing, I told her, do you know what you're going to do now? Aha, uh -huh. this day is ended. Share the whole money with them and tell them that the remaining money of the last year is still in your hands. That you are going to pay back. Do you know the moment you pay back this money? Oh, what a child of God. What a great child of God. They never knew. He was trying to do restitution with wisdom and understanding. Oh, God. May God help us so that money is not going to be a snare. A lot of people, money have become snare. When you talk about money, do you know I was going to preach in one church and somebody told me this church, anybody met treasure here, any money in his hand, you swallow the money. Any money, if you contribute money from the poor for any project, give to anybody, he will swallow the money. If you say bring out the money now, you tell you this person swallowed his own, this person swallowed his own, why do you want me to uh, bring out my own? And they become competitors of chewing and eating of God's money, swallowing God's money. And that day, on the judgment day, what do you think that will happen to them? How do you handle finances? A lot of people don't go into paying tithe again. They don't pay their tithe, they swallow their money, they swallow their, their tithe, they swallow God's money, they ate their own, and yet they are crying poverty, poverty, poverty. Why can't poverty destroy them? Why can't poverty uh, blind them when they are not doing what they are supposed to do? When they are not faithful to God, their maker, then God cannot be faithful to them. Love of money. Money has been a destiny killer to a lot of people. So many people pursued it quickly and they ended up quickly. Having preached this today, we're going to start with spiritual destiny killers. You have seen the physical destiny killers. Don't be involved. And don't allow yourself. Give God his portion, take your portion. Give God what belongs to him and say, this is God's own, I will not touch it. And you see how God will allow you. A lot of things begin to go wrong because in the finances, you are not faithful. You might be faithful, prayerful. You might be faithful other way. 
and God will be faithful for you on those way. But where you are not faithful, he said, to he that is frontward, I'll be frontward. To he that is crooked, I'll be crooked. But to he that is straightforward to me, I'll be straightforward to that person. How are you handling God? And how are you handling issues about God? How are you handling the issues of God? Do you want God to be crooked to you? Or what do you exactly want of the Lord? If you want God to be crooked, the Lord will be crooked to you. If you want God to be frontward, oh, the Lord will equally be frontward to you. Ah, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. May the Lord see us through in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, may the name of God be glorified and magnified in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To him be other glory. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. That's what the Bible says. Can we begin to bless the name of the Lord now? Can you begin to say, God, having heard it, I've seen about the physical destiny killers. Help me. Every impotence in my life should go. Every evil association I've been keeping, I will do away with them. Every impotence should go. I wait for you. That's the third time you have said for me. Every uncontrolled habit, whatever thing it is, every uncontrolled habit should go. I'm not going to be something that was destroyed by that woman. Disobedient. Oh, no. Like that old young prophet. Incontent. No. I'm going to be satisfied with what I have. The Bible said be content with what you have. I'm not going to be like Balaam. Female. I'm not going to be like Solomon that was so mad with women and went to many of them. 700 wives, 300 concubines. Is he a human being? That was the wisest man and he made the worst mistake of life. Fame like the young prophet. Finances like Demas. How can I forget God because of finances? When I was poor, when I was nobody, their money was not my problem. Now that God has blessed me and lifted me up, why then should I be against God? May the name of Christ be glorified forever. To him alone be other glory in Jesus' name. Shall we begin to pray? Can I begin to say, God, I have seen the physical destiny killer. In any one, any of them is in my life. You know the one that is troubling your life. You know where you're having difficult to serve God with any of them. Is it in obedience? Maybe you don't obey. Is it on your finances? Maybe you don't handle it very well. Is it in uncontrolled character? Somebody might have told you something about somebody. You didn't verify it. You judge somebody to hate somebody. That's a destiny killer. That's a destiny killer. You're burying your destiny because people you don't do anything to is going to hurt you too. That's a seed you're sowing. Why not call the person and say, look at what I heard about you. May the name of Christ alone be glorified. Gossiping is not of the Lord. Can you end it today? And Christ will be glorified. Hallelujah. We give God all the praise. We worship him. We honor you. We adore you, Lord. We magnify. Every adoration, every thanksgiving, every purpose to the name of the Lord. Can you begin to talk to God and say, give me grace, give me grace. Give me overcoming grace. Give me overcoming power to overcome every physical destiny killer. This one that I come in physically that I can know. Give me spiritual understanding to overcome them. And God will give you grace to overcome them in Jesus' name. You have the power of the Lord. You have greatness of the Lord. You have the real genuine power from Jehovah Shalom. And you will overcome them. And they will be overcome in Jesus' Jesus' name. We bless the name of the Lord forever. For unto him alone be other glory. We worship Emmanuel Adonai. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Do you want to say, I want to overcome this? You can't overcome them by your power. You cannot overcome them by your mind. But by the divine grace of the Lord. Can you say, Lord Jesus, I need your grace. If you need his grace, you must receive him as Lord and Savior. Can you begin to say right now, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I receive you right now as my Lord and Savior. Forgive every of my sin and give me grace to be your child, now and forevermore. Amen. May the mighty hand of God rest upon you. May God of mercy forgive you all your sins. Let the yesterday of your life be gone and let there be newness of life and real power of God upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the God of mercy walk in your life right now and let there be renewal and revisitation. You child of God, anything that be hindering you, I command right now to get out of you evil association in Jesus' name. Every impotence in your life I command to go. Every uncontrolled character in your life or habit be gone. Every disobedience be gone. Every content be gone. Every male or female deceiving your life be gone. Every fame of any type 
every financial problem, every financial greediness be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that tie you as a robe, I cut them off. I say be healed. I say be free. And let the mighty hand of the Lord come your way. And let the power of God come your way. And let Jesus of Nazareth walk into your life and show you the way out and the vampires of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of the Lord come your way. And greatness of the Lord come your way. Goodness of the Lord come your way. Every destiny killer be exposed in your life. A very close friend. Anybody around you that's a destiny killer. The devil is using to quench you. The power of darkness is using any power physically. Anything around you that's being used. Let the power of the Lord expose that thing right now. And the mightiness of the Lord come your way. And Jehovah shall not open his, your eyes. So that you're going to know and you will excel. Anyway, anything that's been dwarfing you. Dwarfing you. I remove that pillar right now. I remove that decking on top of your head. I get them broken now. And let the power of Jesus work upon you. Every sickness standing as a destiny killer. Any money you made is going through that sickness. Any money you make is going through that sickness. Let it be destroyed now. And let that sickness be gone. The Bible says you have been healed by the stripes of Jesus of Nazareth. The Bible said I am the Lord that healed you. Be healed by God himself. And be healed by his divine power. In the mighty name of Jesus I pray. Receive divine touch right now and divine healing. And the glory of God come upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It's where we are going out and coming. I pronounce peace on your way. I pronounce life in your health right now. I command peace in your marriage now. Peace in your home right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any power, force and influence, the devil said to destroy your home, to cause the mind of your husband to be bad on you, mind of your wife to be bad on you, I nullify, I defy them. Let the glory of the Lord come forth. And let the peace of Jesus rule over you. Now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. I come on for total restoration. Total restoration of that your child. That your child have gone astray. That your child have gone too far. That your child that cannot come back. I command him to come back home now. Let the peace of God rule over his head. Let the mighty hand of the Lord rule over his life. And let Jesus of Nazareth be his everything and Christ be honored unto the Lord be other glory. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray. You see joy and peace. You see goodness and mercy. You see favor of God. And God's goodness will ever rest upon your life. Now and forevermore, I decree in Jesus' name. It's where we are going out and coming in. Peace unto you. And the God of heaven and earth restores joy and peace to you. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Jesus loves you, so do I. I got to see you again by Wednesday. We're going to see you again by Wednesday. By 7 p.m. Nigerian time. We're going to continue on this teaching. Ah about destiny killer. We'll soon conclude it and then get to other important topics God is giving to us. Like what I told you, God keep on giving us topic to preach upon. He will help us more. God bless you. You're going out and you're coming in. His peace rule over your life. Are you confused right now? Don't be. Relax in God. He will show you a way out. It is well with you. You are blessed on the Lord. God will keep you. Bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's well with you. Eh? Bye.